Imagine an Excel application without user forms or sheet forms. In the future, we will be able to use natural language to instruct Excel to do whatever we want. We will be able to add or update new contact records with simple instructions or add income or expenses simply by typing in what we spent and when. Imagine a future where you could extract critical sales or expense data with written or spoken natural language and Excel response with real-time data in seconds. Well, I'm excited to tell you that that future is today. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and this week's training, I'm going to share with you the first ever Excel natural language input that's going to allow you to add update, delete, and summarize data with actual natural language input. I cannot wait, it's gonna be an incredible training, so let's get started. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today I've got something absolutely unique I've never seen and never shared with you in Excel before, and that's natural language input, which means no more user forms, no more sheet forms. Excel is gonna be able to understand a natural language to be able to add, update, edit records, or summarize whether it's financial or transaction data, all from a single cell in Excel. Let me show you what I mean. For example, we've got a contact sheet here. It's just a general contact sheet. We've got name, email, phone, address, city, state, and zip, okay? I wanna add a record to that, and I wanna put it in row 21 here. So I wanna add a brand new contact. Now I've copied some information here, and I'm just gonna paste it right in here inside this cell. Add John James, we've got an address, we've got a city, state, zip, no particular order, phone number, and an email. I'm gonna press enter here. Automatically, it is going to be added in the right order. The following contact has been added. Contact name, email, phone, address, city, state, and zip, all in the correct order. We're gonna look in the contacts, and we see that this has now been added all in the correct order. Maybe we wanna make an update. Maybe we entered something incorrect. Maybe we entered an incorrect email. Let's go ahead and update that. So all we need to do is just type in update John James, make sure we spell that right here. And then all we need to do is just put in the correct any order. So let's just say we want to put in his name as John, right? We put in John. Let's do the John and then add this company. Okay, so now it's going to be updated. Now we'll take a look at the email. Now it says, now the email is John, this company. If we look in the context, we see that now the email has been updated in the right order, just like that. That and a whole lot more. Maybe we want to add a transaction. Show you that one. We've got a list of transactions here. So here we go. Row 84 is where we're going to put it. You see, there's nothing there. Let's go ahead and add it in right now. We're going to go back into the entry sheet. I spent, so let's put in $25 on laundry yesterday. Okay, great, same cell, we're putting it in, putting in the same date, what we spent, and now the following transaction has been added, the date, the expense, the account, and the amount. If we take a look in the transactions here, we see date, expense, laundry, and amount perfectly, all with natural language. I'm gonna show you that every step of the way. I'm gonna get off camera, I'm gonna let my hair down, and then we're gonna get right to work. I'm gonna show you every single step with this. I do appreciate you right here with us every single week. I just ask a few things. If you can do it, go ahead and click subscribe. That'll help us. Of course, don't forget to click that like button, along with the subscription notification icon bell. That'll ensure that you get these trainings each and every week. I do these every single Tuesday, just for you. Of course, this workbook, like every week, is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below in the description, and I'll make sure that gets sent over right to you. If you do like these trainings, you want to support the channel, there are so many great ways to do just that. The best way to do that is with some of our courses or products, right? If you like the courses, like you want to create an incredible dashboard course, I've got an incredible dashboard masterclass. It's going to show you how to create a single-click dashboard, unlimited reports, graphs, custom reports, all with single click technology. And I'm gonna show you that. That's in a 16 hour masterclass. I've got that. I'm gonna include the link down below to make sure. All right, let's get to work right in this and I'm gonna show you every aspect of this so that you can create it on your own. All right, great, let's get started. 
All right, we're going to get started on this training. I'm going to go over a brief overview of what we got. I got a really cool uh, conversion flow chart that's going to help you understand what we're doing. Then we're going to get in deep. Okay, so basically the features of this are we're going to be able to add contacts. So as I showed you earlier, we can add any contact. We can put any type of contact information in as we want to, and it's going to be parsed properly. So if we want to say add Lisa smithers and then we can just do it even just an email address is sufficient enough and it's going to be parsed properly okay so we got that and what's going to do is going to add that in we're going to get this notification okay so we can update that so again we look in the context we see that lisa's and her email address we can add a phone number we can then update right using the word update or add to or something like that the keywords we want to make sure we get the spelling right that's going to help and then we can put the phone of we don't even need to put the phone of you know we don't need that but it's helpful to show you some different ones through 10 any format should be sufficient so we don't even need the correct format and then what that's going to do is going to let us know that it's been updated on the phone number in the right place okay so we see that's updated and i can also remove lisa so if we see in the context we see lisa is here her phone number has been added in any entries we can also just remove lisa smithers or we can say delete or we can use keywords any type of keywords would, would help right so remove lisa would work just fine so now we're going to remove it has been deleted and if we go into the context we see lisa's no longer there okay great so those are the basically three main features of contacts add update and delete now we also need to add transactions so we can add transactions based on a lot of different keywords so any type of transactions that you can think of that you would have in every day so maybe we we're going to say i got paid from work on the first of this month for let's say four hundred and fifty dollars okay so that's a transaction an income transaction here it says the following transaction been added the date for one it's income the account is work and 450 nice okay so it went right in there in the perfect spot okay we can also do expenses obviously that so we could say i paid 300 for utilities yesterday so it's also going to today is the uh let's see 27th of april so you can see here the following transaction has been added the 26th it knows the current date it understands yesterday expense account utilities and the amount 300 of course we could get this formatted to dollars but it's not a priority right now so the transactions here 26 expense utilities 300 so we see it went into that now also so we can add transactions and then the fifth one that we can do is we can summarize summarize transactions you can do expenses income and even profit so were the total expenses for last week okay so what's going to do is going to come up i've cleared the area there and we can see that it's going to automatically update the total expenses the total expense for last week 322 to 328 were 1075 500 for uh, medical bills 150 that's 650 total here we have uh, 725 right and then we have 1075 for vacation so not only that it's going to let us know exactly what those expenses were we can do the same thing with income what was the income from last sometimes i think i like to use the word total the total income from last month okay so again it's going to figure out the dates determine the dates and determine the total income all from natural language so you've seen some great examples here it'll take just a minute it's got a lot of data so it's going to give it to us in a little bit of a table format we've got the dates here the type the sales paycheck investment revenue sales and 360 and all this is coming from our transactions okay it's all coming from this table here okay great so that's kind of a summary we can also do profit and loss and a few things like that as well okay but i want to get into it so how do we make this happen well again this is really comprised of just three sheets we've got our entry sheets and it's nothing more than just one single cell cell c4 where we're going to enter all that transaction all of your natural language input whatever it is you then want our results are going to come into this shape it's just a shape where our results are going to come it's going to get cleared out I've got a contact list as I've shown you and I've got a transaction list that I've shown you we're going to have some filters we're going to have these date filters and we're going to have the results come here and then we're going to be able to total those results up here as well okay great so how do we make this all happen and I've got a conversion flow I want to go over with you now I mentioned here in this conversion flow what we're going to do is we're going to use the combination of Excel macros plus chat GPT in several conditions and chat GPT is going to help us out with a lot of the parsing of the data and figuring out what goes where and how does it happen okay so if you're not familiar with chat GPT you can find your account it's an open AI account right here go to openai.com and create a free account 
Okay, once you create your free account, you can go learn about it, add login to it. So you can do just try chat GPT-4 here. Once you get your account signed on, you'll go into your My Accounts like here. We've got a My Accounts here. You manage your account. So you have all your account, you get your daily usage. And then what you'll want to do is you can go to API keys. You'll create a brand new API key. And this is important because we're gonna need to connect to this. So you create an API key. Now it's fine if you see my key because I'll be deleting it after this training. Once you get that API key, we're gonna put it in this admin. Our admin is very basic and we're gonna put it right in here. So you're gonna paste it right in here. Now the model won't stay the same. I've got the temperature is zero. Now the model is like the type that we're using. We're using text DaVinci 3. And it's basically just different models, different we're going to be used with the API. But I've been using uh, text DaVinci 3 because it's very stable and they have four that's coming out soon but it's only available for the paid so we're going to stick with three which is good for the free the temperature goes from zero to one the more the larger it will increase the creativity now for something like this we don't want any creativity so i'm keeping that at zero if you're writing something if you want some creative writing you would increase it but we don't want any creativity and the response language is english i did not incorporate this but this is something we'll do for patreon in fact if you have any ideas you want me to add something to this you want me to fix something or you want me to go in more depth of this i'm going to do that through the feature fix or focus through our patreon members so i'll include the link down below make sure you get on patreon because i'll be adding a lot more onto this template for you okay great so that's all it is for the admin very very simple not much going on with that so here's the idea here there's a process flow that we're going to go over and we're going to go over some of the macros i'm going to keep this a little bit quick i don't want to go into uh long long videos right i'm going to try to keep it under an hour or if I can okay so we have this initial request now that initial request is right here this is the initial request we're, we're doing we also have our okay let's go back to the conversation flow here so what we need is we're going to send that initial request to chat gpt the e api there and i really want to request two things from chat gpt i want to know what type of request it is and what database are we dealing i just want to know two things so it is going to we're going to send this request here and it's going to let us know what are we looking for okay so there's only a few possibilities okay so we only have two databases the databases are contacts and transactions okay when it comes to contacts we are either going to add a contact update a contact or delete a contact. when it comes to the transactions we are either going to add a transaction or we're going to summarize a transaction so there's really five possibilities and inside the conversion flow we're going to see those so the first one we're going to take that initial request chat gpt we're going to send something to them to that api we're going to send our request to them and it's going to determine the request and the data type so it's going to go in here it's going to make a decision what is the data type is it contacts or is it transactions and if it's transactions are we going to be adding a transaction or are we going to be summarizing data if it's going into contact data so are we going to be adding the contact data are we going to be updating it or are we going to be deleting that contact data so we need to know which one we're going to be doing and so what we want ChatGPT to do is we want it to parse the data accordingly for example if i give it a bunch of text i want ChatGPT to tell me exactly where it goes so it's going to say okay i see all your text I want you to put contact in column one, email, phone, address, city, and state in that order. So the first thing we do is we determine that it is a contact. If it is a contact, what are we doing? Are we updating it? Are we deleting it? Or are we are going to add a new one that was what we need if it's an added new one we're going to place it on the first available row if we are updating or deleting a contact we need to find it where row is it located on based on the contact name if we're going to be updating it we're going to check to see if there's any new information and we're going to make the appropriate update to the contact if we're deleting it we're going to locate the row and we're going to delete that row based on that if it is found so that's it for the context with the transactions we're simply going to determine are we summarizing data or are we adding a new transaction now if we're adding a new transaction we're going to find that first row this one didn't go in too well sometimes it is not perfect right but it's going to be perfect one day very very soon so you'll find some issues and i'm going to show you how we can best do it so sometimes there are imperfections this is not a perfect science not yet okay but it's getting much much closer and the sooner that you learn how to work with these the sooner that you're going to be able to create robust applications so that when the technology catches up within weeks or months you will be ready so what we're going to be doing is putting that brand new transaction into four types and so 
And so ChatGPT is going to tell us, okay, we know, we see, if we say yesterday and we know that today is the 27th, ChatGPT is going to tell us that yesterday was the 26th. It's going to tell us that we have an expense type based on our natural, right? If we, if I, so for example, let's put another one in here so we can just see. I paid, uh, let's see, $456 for groceries with or without the dollar sign, it doesn't matter, groceries uh, today, okay? So I paid 456 for groceries today. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to send this to ChatGPT. We want to figure out today, we know it's the current date. Groceries paid means expense, right? So, and we know the amount. So it's gonna be able to tell us all that and it's gonna be able to figure out which columns to go in. And then when we look in the transactions, we're gonna to see today, expense, groceries, 456. Entered it. The reason it was twice is because I clicked enter twice. So every time we hit enter, it's going to add it again, right? So basically it's going to add three times. So basically what I should probably do is just clear out this so we don't do that by accident. Once it, it's entered correctly, just clear, probably clear the cell out because now it's going to be three times, which is fine. You know, we understand that it's working. It's consistent, which I like. I like that consistency. So if I clear out that cell, it won't add it a third time. Fair enough. Okay. It's chat GPT's responsibility, the API to figure out what goes in what column based on our natural language. And then summarizing data is a little bit different. Let's go into the conversion flow and take a look at this. So let's just go start at the top. So we add the contact data. All we're doing is simply adding a new contact and then we're showing the results to the user. When we update a contact, we need to look for the contact name. If that contact is not found, we're gonna let the user know it's not been found. If it is found, we're gonna make the appropriate update to the contact database. And then we're gonna show those results. Then we're gonna do the same thing if we're gonna deleting a contact. Again, we're gonna look it up based on the contact name. If it's found, we are going to delete the contact. If it's not, we're gonna alert the user. If we're adding a transaction, we are going to then parse the data. We need to know what columns it's going into. And then we're gonna add that new transaction. And then we're gonna show the results. Now, when it comes to summarizing data, it's a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to walk you step by step through it. So when we want to summarize the data, that means we need maybe, maybe total expenses, or maybe we want to know the total profit or total income for a certain period of time. So we're going to summarize the data. We're going to request some criteria. In other words, if I say expenses for last month, I need to know that it's all the expenses and I need to know the last month. Now in Excel, we're gonna run an advanced filter and it's gonna look something like this. Let's clear out whatever's here, okay? So that's income. So let's clear out whatever's here. So what I want ChatGPT to do is I want it to give me the starting date, the ending date, and the type of transaction. If I wanna know all of the income for last month, it's currently April, that means I wanna figure out through the conversation, through that natural language, that we're starting on March 1st. And we're gonna look up to the last day of the month and it's gonna be income or expenses. So for example, let's go into entries and we'll see how that goes. What were my total expenses for last month? Okay, we can also put March in too. That would work just fine. We're gonna go inside. So, so it's gonna go send it through the API. It's gonna get all the information. So we have all the information here. Okay, we'll clear that out. What was, let's do this. What was the total expenses Let's do, let's do a shorter period of time. Let's do income from last month. Okay, so I want to know the total income for last month. And what that's going to do, it's going to automatically summarize that and it's going to base it on those dates. So here we have the totals and the totals are 3,600. Okay, so we got five dates here. So if we go in back into the transactions, we're going to see that it automatically placed greater than or equal to March 1st, less than or equal to uh, March 31st and income. Okay, but what about if I want to do something different? So if I go back in the entries, what are the total expenses for this month? Okay, now I want to know this month. So we're going to change it. Now we're currently in April. So I want to make sure that those totals for April. So we're going to take a look. It's going to send it to that API. And here we go. The total 4.1 through 4.27. It understands the dates are 5,040. Okay. And we're going to go back into the transactions. And we're going to see now it's greater than or equal to April 1st, less than or equal to the current date, which is good. And we got expense type of expenses. Okay. And we've got some results here and we have a total here. Perfect. So that's exactly. So what I need from ChatGPT is once I understand that we're summarizing expenses, I need to do the, the greater than or equal to less than or equal to here and the expense type. We can also do account. Maybe we want to do groceries, right? And we, let's try that. Let's see that. How much? Let's see. What is the total grocery 
expense for this month okay so we can even do type both based on account not just expenses so let's give that a try and see what we come up with okay it's never an exact science so i'm not exactly sure that but we'll try for this month work so here's what i want to happen right i want expense and i want groceries here so it's good chat gpt is going to be given all the data here so it's going to let us know how many groceries were there okay so it did everything actually that i wanted but not as, as good as i had hoped i would hope it had put a groceries here but that's okay because it looked at all of our results on 412 it looked on 424 it found 44 425 and all of these and it had totaled them up it did determine that so you can see inside the entries that it did find these transactions i believe that it found them all okay and it's for 1217 so it was able to find that too okay so now we see all of that so what we're going to be doing summarizing the data we're requesting that criteria it's going to then VBA is going to take that criteria and it's going to put it right here, right here, and right here. And I wish it would have done account, but we'll do something with the prompts to hopefully help it. It's a little bit difficult though, you know, but it's definitely challenging, but it's also a lot of fun. But still got a, we still got an accurate answer. Summarizing is, is less exact. And so then it's going to add that criteria. And then what we're going to end filter and it's going to run that filter too let's add that out here and then what we're going to do is i want to take all of the totals everything that came through and i want to send all this information to uh chat gpt and i want to send this total and so sometimes this total the luckily this is the total of all expenses we're only focused on groceries so it was able to filter it out itself and determine the groceries and, and i'm not sure if it's accurate or not actually sometimes the totals aren't accurate in this but this one may mean may not have been but it was pretty good so we're getting closer and closer to the amazing solution so continuing on so then what we're just going to send that financial data and we're going to extract the response here that response is going to go to our results and that's what we see right here okay so let's dig a little deeper and see how do we make this happen well there's something that's called prompts and basically a prompt is a request that we're going to send to the chat gpt api in order to get back a response so part of the prompt is this right here what is the total grocery expense for this month also want to instruct it a little bit more so let's start out basic with the context what is our initial request so let's say add harry hamlin put the address one two three four five main street okay so we're going to start out with the most basic adding the context so it's going to add that contact name so it's left the email the phone the city state blank and we just simply added that okay so what i want to do is i need an in initial macro that we're going to run when c4 is changed so when we make a change to c4 as long as c4 is not blank we want to send some information so let's take a look inside the developer alt f11 will get you into visual basic alt f11 is the shortcut so we're going to click on there and what we're going to do is we're going to go to our sheet called entry sheet there's just a tiny bit of code here entry sheet and as we said we're going to make a worksheet change we're making a change to the worksheet so we can find that right here under worksheet and then change so we make a change to the worksheet a specific cell c4 we also need to make sure that c4 is not empty so we need the other second condition is range c4 does not equal empty we're going to run a macro called initial request now i'm going to go over the most important parts of these macros so that you can see exactly how it works okay but i don't necessarily need to go over every line of code i'm going to try to keep these videos to an hour minimum sometimes they get way too long and you guys fall asleep so we cannot have that so there's a module here called initial request initial request okay and so i've got some public going to mention some public here they're going to be used for every macro module here we need a request type what type are we requesting now request type is going to be something that we know is it are we adding are we updating are we deleting that's going to be the request type we need that api key that's going to be constant that's coming from our admin screen we need the temperature remember the temperature and we need the model that's going to come directly from so we've got our api our model and our temperature here all of that okay continuing on inside we also want to extract some information from c4 here so we're going to move that so we also need to know the response what is the response from the api we're going to dimension the object 
HTTP. That's going to be just an object that's going to send that information to our API. I need to know the response, the body, the string, and a bunch of information. These are strings that we'll go through. And we got some other strings and some arrays. We're going to go through those as we come up. API key, we're going to extract from the admin, the model from the admin, and the temperature. So all these are coming from the admin, D4, D5, and D6. So let's come. Language, okay, then we're going to set the language if the language now this is a named range here if we take a look inside the admin we see that there's a named range called language language we can use that inside the code with brackets so notice the brackets and it's not empty then we're going to set please make sure the response is in the language else the language right so that's going to let us know a different language i'm not sure if i added that onto the final i've been just working with english okay so we're going to make sure the model set if it's left blank we're going to set default and i'm going to set this to zero actually set the default to zero okay that way we get much better results the request is going to be based on c4 this is the initial we're going to call this the initial user entry request so that's whatever they typed in now the prompt condition is something that we're going to be adding what is the prompt condition it's going to come from 04 i have not shown you that yet so i want to go one step at a time so if we look inside the entry screen what i'm going to do is i'm going to slide over here i'm going to bring it a little bit closer here so we can see it together and then we'll just shrink these down now this is our initial request in 04. so basically if i send only this to chat gpt they're not going to know what uh where it's going to go right they're not going to know what to do with it so i need to know what are we going to do with that information right how do we deal with that so we need to give chat gpt very specific instructions on what we want so i want to take a look at the request and i want to determine is it for contacts or is it a transaction and if it's for contacts are we adding it are we updating it or are we deleting it right so that's really what i want to know and the same thing for transactions so we need to give it very specific instructions to do that and then it's a little bit hard to read i probably shouldn't use it but let's take a look at it up here okay so this is what we're going to focus on so we can zoom in on this please determine the following based on the request below right the below is what we're going to add in c4 first of all i need one one what type of request is being made of the data please respond with the response type as follows add data update data or delete data so i want chat gpt to tell me which one of those three things we're going to be doing or the fourth one summarize data so it needs to figure out properly categorize based on our request are we adding it are we updating it are we deleting it or are we summarizing if the request appears to be an expense or income type then the response is add data all right based on the request below which of the following two databases does this involve contacts or transaction any mention of income expense cost profit or anything to do with accounting should be transaction only these two responses are needed without any additional response details or information use commas for the delimiter remove the word database from any results the request is as follows so after this right there's nothing after this what we'll do on the record is we're going to combine this with we're going to combine with what's in c4 with this so after that would be add harry hamlin uh, main street so we're going to combine those two and that's what we've done inside the code so the prompt condition is here the request so first comes the prompt condition and then comes a request and we're going to combine those into a single string called prompt and we're going to separate it by i'm going to add the word text so that it knows it's looking for what this is, means brand new line in when we send that api this backslash n means a brand new line so i want that request to appear in the line below so that's the prompt then what we're going to do is we're going to send it to chat gpt we're going to create an object we only need to do this once because we've set it up here as a public and then what we're going to do is we're going to open a post and we're going to send this to the api so we're going to create a body this is also really consistent here the prompt here is always going to be the prompt the prompt of course is going to be different based on the conditions but we're always going to use the same variable prompt we're going to send the temperature and the max tokens we can send this a little bit higher maybe to 4,000. okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to send the content type as json and authorization and your api key Okay, so we're going to send that if i want to know what was sent and want to see it inside the immediate window i can then uh, uncomment this out debug print ai so you know exactly what was sent but we don't need to see that okay we're going to send it and then we're going to get a response back and so let's take a look inside the last response the last response we got back was called add data and contact adding data and we're adding it to the context that's exactly what i want i don't want anything else 
If we take a look at the request here, we're adding it and we're adding it to the context, okay? Now, if I create another one, let's clear that out just so we can see the response. What do we send? We sent it to them, right? That's all we got. So that's all I want, right? And now what do I want to do? I also want to add information to the context. That's going to be the next. So that's all we got back. Now, what do I want to do with that? Once I get that add context, but we're, it's going to come back in this long, long string. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of all of that. Okay. All I want here is add data and context. Okay. So that's all we want. We're going to focus on that. How do we get that information? Okay, well, you'll notice it sent us back some information that we don't need. Here's what it sent us back. It sent us back uh, Los Angeles, California, right? Add data and context. So we don't need all. The only what I really want here is this part right here. Add data and context. So what I want to do is I want to remove everything to the left of NN. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to remove everything to the left of, if you've seen any of my trainings, we've done this before a few times, looking at text, right? See that text there? What I want to do is I want to remove the left JSON response, removing that from left. So basically, I want to look, see this text, this is where it starts. I want to remove everything to the left of that. This will do that. Using the right command, we can do that. Then what I want to do is I want to remove everything to the right of what? Everything to the right of this index, index right here. You see, we are, this is the most important information that I want. I want to extract this. We're adding data and context. So I want to remove everything to the right of that. So we can use the left command to do that. And we're going to look for index. I removed there. So basically, that's going to just keep us with this right here. It says Los Angeles. So this is what it ends up. But I really don't want Los Angeles, California. I don't want that. Sometimes it gives me additional information I don't want. I only want this. So what we want to do is if it contains NN, which it does, then what I want to do is I want to remove anything to the left of NN, right? So I already know based on some feedback that we can remove everything to the left of them. So to do that, we're going to use the right command. We're going to locate where the NN is. We're going to remove everything, including the items there, including where it's been found. And basically, this line is just going to allow us to extract add data and context. So that's all that does. So when you see this debugged parsed answer, that's going to do is give us right. This is all we want. That's exactly what I want. So this debug parsed answer took what we have, that parsed answer, which is this right here, add data, comma, context. So I know what I'm doing and I know where I'm doing it. Okay, that's exactly what I want. We're going to split that because I want to extract both of those. We're going to use that comma. That's the delimiter we asked us to use it because I want to separate add data and context. I want to put those into different variables. So the first part of it inside an array, when we're using an array, we're splitting a string based on a delimiter. That's going to create two sections for us because we only have one comma. So it's going to include something to the left and something to the right. Whatever's to the left is that first value. When it's an array, that first value is zero. The second value is one. So that first value is going to be called our request type. That second value is going to be called database type. Now what we're going to do is we're going to determine what macros should we run based on these two. So if we're going to use select case, now we can build this out a little bit. If the request type, right, we know the request type is going to be add data. If it's add data, if it's update data, or if it's delete data, we're going to do either one of these. If the database is contacts, then we know we are going to send this information, contact data. We're going to run a macro. I'll go over that with you next called contact data. And we're going to send to that macro the request type. So it's going to either be add data, update data or delete data based on this request type. So we're sending this variable to the macro, the value of that add data, update data, or delete data. Likewise, if it's a transaction, all we're going to be doing is really adding data. We don't have update data and delete data, although that would be nice, but it's kind of a little bit more difficult to locate a specific transaction. We don't have a transaction. If we use transaction IDs, we might be able to do it. So right now we just add transactions. So when it comes to transactions, the request type is always going to be add data. And then if it's summarized data, we're going to run this macro. So we're going to go over that less. Okay, so if it's context, we're going to run this macro called contact data. So basically, all we're doing is running this macro called request type. 
Now, when we go into the contact macros, we're going to see that's the first macro called contact data request type as a string. So remember, the request type is either add data, update data, or delete. Okay. So the request, again, I want to put that request into a variable from C4. I want to take it. That request is important because now I know what we're doing. I know we're either updating, adding, or we're deleting it based on the initial request. But I, the request itself, for example, I don't know. I'm looking at this string. I need to get some help with this. I need to know where is the address and where is the name from that text and I need some help from ChatGPT to tell us oh look there's a name here's your name and here's your address what we need to do is we need to understand that we added it twice I'm gonna have it clear it out when we do that so we don't do it twice so I need to know okay the contact name is in column one and the address is in column four okay so and leave these blank I need some help with that so how do we do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send again, I'm going to send this information here at Harry Hamlin also to ChatGPT, but I'm going to send it with some different instructions this time. So we're going to send it, but based on some different instructions or a different prompt. So what is that? Let's take a look at that. That's called the contact request. This is what we're going to send. So we're sending the same data, but we're sending different instructions. So we're going to ask it, please parse the following contact information request into the following column appropriately. Any missing data should be left blank. And it says, do not add data that is not in the original request. If the original request is to remove or delete the contact, return the name in the first column, leaving the remaining columns blank. Right? If we're deleting, if we'll delete, to delete a contact or remove it, results should be i don't need any more than that if it's going to be deleted results should be in table form using the following column structure so i'm saying please return it in the following and then i'm going to say a new line right two new lines just to separate it so contact name email phone address city state zip and that's it so those are the instructions so we're actually telling it and then what we're going to do is we're going to apply once more below that we're going to apply this whatever's located in c4 so this time we're combining it so again we're saying the prompt condition is going to be based on 05 that's what i just read to you 05 that's what is here so we're going to be some different instructions so we've got the prompt conditions we've got the request and now again we're going to combine them i'm going to remove any uh characters any new lines or any characters just because i want to make sure it's readable so when we send it it can only read new lines as backslash n so if there's a new line using character 10 or vb new line we need to make sure that we're placing it with backslash n so that's going to make sure that it's sent there then what we're going to do is again we're going to do the same thing we're posting it we're sending the model we're doing all the same thing i don't need to go over this with you again we're sending it we're getting a response back we're going to run we're going to check for certain conditions i need to check but i want to do this each time so what are we checking for i'm going to check for let's go back into initial request i'm going to check for these conditions i got this some the server was down and i got this issue that the server was down because it included doc type or there's an incorrect api key here or there's no api key or the maximum content length. you just saw that come up a little bit okay so sometimes i get those so i want to make sure that we're going to check for those conditions if, if they exist and we're going to check it through this macro right here checking those conditions let's go back up here so now what we do again we're going to remove the left and the right portion just like we did before i don't need to go over that again to work basically and then what we're going to do is we're going to check for the nn case it and then what we're going to do is we're going to split i want to split it based on the new line what does it look like when we add a brand new contact let's take a look i'm going to delete this all clear this out we're going to add a brand new contact and i want to add it with all the information and so we can see we can follow along exactly what's going on okay so we're going to add sally smothers and then we'll do one two three four five oak street los angeles california nine let's do 90252 we'll do an email so we'll do let's say sally at smothers.com and we'll put a phone number in here so i want to be able to see the responses okay i set the maximum too high on the contact that's my fault okay keep that at 3500 don't okay there we go okay so let's go ahead and do that okay enter one so into that okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that response sally's gonna the following contact has been added sally smothers email phone 
uh, sitting straight. Okay, so everything looks good. So let's take a look at the response. So maximum contact, we saw that. We saw we had too many tokens, right? So I allowed too many. That's fine. We can get rid of that. We saw that error come up. No problem. If you see that error, nothing to worry about. So basically, we want to keep this at 3,500, 4,000. Because if you combine 4,000, if your, your request is larger, like we have a lot of text in our request, we would need to lower this, okay? So the larger your request is, the lower. If we run, if you get maximum tokens, that could happen. Okay, no problem. All right, so add data and context. But you know what I want to do? Let me debug the response that we get. So once we get the parsed answer here, I want to see what that looks like. So if we take a look inside here. We see that we got, we're adding the contents. So that's exactly what we want. But I want to see the output. What is it came? So let's take a look at the output as we go through this macro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment this out. I want to take a look at the response. And we're going to go back into the initial request. We already know we've seen this. So I'm going to comment out. We don't need to see all the data, just very specific. So I'm going to comment this out because I don't want to see this and I don't want to see this. We already saw that. So we're going to comment that out. And we're going to, so we're going to focus just on this macro. I'm going to clear that out here. We go back into the context. I just want to delete Sally and I want to enter it one more time. So we're just going to double click on that. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to add it all over again. And it's going to have the same results. So we go back into the context. We see it's here again. Now what I want to do is I want to go into that. So let's take a look and see what it came up with. So it says Sally Smothers here. Okay, that's the first. So here's our response when it came to us. So it got the name, right? So it got the email, the phone number, the address, the city, the state, and the zip. So it put it all, and the separator is this straight line along with the space. So it put it all the information that we sent right here, and it put it in the correct order that we want. Now all we need to do is parse it and put it in our database. So that is the response that we've gotten right here. So we put that in here. So the one that we debugged is right here. So we're going to check the response, right? And all we need to do, again, basically we want to remove everything to the left of it and everything to the right of it. So that's all we're going to be doing inside these here, removing all the left and the right. And then what we're going to do in string, check for headers. I want to make sure that there's no headers. What do I mean by that? I want to make sure that the word contact name is not inside it. Sometimes it'll return that. In this case, it is exactly what we wanted. Only return the data, which is what we wanted, and it only returned it in the order that we wanted. So it's perfect exactly without any header name. But if it does contain a header name, then what I want to do is I want to create an array and I want to use the second row, which would be one. The first row is what? Zero. And we're going to create a split based on this. So we're going to take all of that parsed answer and we're going to split it if there's an N. That means a new row, that response array. So basically what we're doing is we're taking all that information we have now. Let's take a look and go it step by step. So what I want to do now is I'm going to comment this out just so we can see we can follow step by step and see exactly where we are, okay? Now what I would like to do is I wanna show you exactly where we are at this point right here. So this response array, the string parsed answer, I wanna see how it looks from this point. So what we can do is use the debug for that. So here, what we're gonna do is we're going to use debug print and then we're going to put that. So I want to show you what that looks like. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to clear that out and then we're going to run the same request again. I'm just going to add a brand new one. We can delete this again. We don't need double. And then we're going to go back into the entries and I'm just going to double click and hit enter again. Okay. So if we're going to take a look at back inside that, here's the results that we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have everything that we need. And now, so you can see what parsed answer looks like. So now we've eliminated everything else and this is exactly what we have. Now, all we need to do is take this string and we need to split it based on this. So we're doing that right here called contact array split either here or we're doing it here. If it contains a header, then we're doing it on the second one found, but this one has no header. So this is the one that we're gonna, just gonna create an array and it's gonna be split by this particular straight line here. What we're gonna be doing there is we're going to check. Now what I wanna do is based on the request type. If we're adding data, the request type is add data, we're gonna create a brand new row. So that row is going to be the first available row in our contact. So we have the contact row where we want that brand new contact added. 
What if we're going to update or delete it? Then what I need to do is I need to look at this value, the first value here, and I need to find what row it's on. So where's that contact name? The contact name is going to be based on the contact array, that first value, which is always zero. But sometimes there's spaces. Notice there's spaces, so we need to use the trim. The trim is going to remove those spaces. And so what it's going to do is going to create. So that first value in this array is called contact name. So I want to put that in a string. In that contact row, I'm just going to reset the contact row to zero to make sure that it is set to zero before we look for it. So what I want to do is I've created a, a named range called contact name. If we go into the formulas, name manager, contact name here, we see that we have a contact name. So I'm going to look inside this named range for the contact name. And I want to know exactly where it has been found. And I want to know what row. So if it's not found, it's going to create an issue. Therefore, we wrap it in on air, resume next, and on air, go to zero. The contact row is simply the contacts, contact name. We're going to find the contact name looking at values and whole. I want to extract the row. If the contact row is zero, let the user know the contact row has not been found. Please check if the name exists or spelling differences. And that's exactly right here as we are inside our conversation flow. If we're updating or we're deleting a contact, right, then if the contact is not found, we're going to alert the user, no. So that's where we get that message box, no. If it is found, we're either going to delete the contact or we're going to update the contact based on whether the request type is delete or update. So that's where we are right now. Check if delete, add, or update. Okay, if the request type is delete data, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to contact delete the entire row. So we're deleting the row only if the request type is delete data. And then we're going to let the user know through a notification text, contact name. So there's a string called notification text. That notification text is going to be placed directly inside here once we finished it. So that notification text currently is in a string, and that's going to be the contact name has been deleted from the context. And then we're going to skip everything else and go to the notification. Okay, what if it's been updated, right? So notification text, if it's updated, we're still inside this, right? We're still inside this else. We're still updating or deleting, right? So we know if it's new, we're still inside this else until we get to the end if right here. So all this is basically either update or deleting context. So if it's been deleted, we've already exited the sub if it's if it's contact where it hasn't been found or we've skipped it if it's already been deleted. Now we're on to update. So now we're updating it. Notification text, the following contact has been, okay? So it's gonna either be updated or deleted, updated or deleted based on that. If the request type is update data, then the notification text equals notification updated, or it's gonna be added, right? So it's either notification text updated or added, I should say added, okay? So that's all we're gonna be doing. So we're adding or updating it based on that. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is because we're either adding or updating it, what I wanna do is I wanna run a loop for the contact column equals one, two, seven. Why seven? Because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns inside the context. So I want to update. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look if there's a value that's inside this array here that I want to make the update, meaning if there's a value here, value here, value here. So we're going to basically loop through those, checking if there's value. And if there's a value, we're going to make the update. For the contact column is one, seven. And of course, we want to make sure that we're trimming it, making sure trim the contact rate, contact column minus one. Why is it minus one? Remember our arrays start on zero, but our column starts on one. So that means that our first value in our array, which is zero, is the contact name. Remember I mentioned before the contact name here, where we pulled it up when we were deleting it here, is going to be zero. So we found that right here, the contact name. That's always our first value. So if I want to place it in column one, I would need to use one. I want to place what value? One, it would be minus one, would be get to zero. So that's going to be our first value. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the contact column minus one. First value zero, which is the name. The second value is the address. So the contact column would be one, two, three. So the value in our array is one less than that, just in case. So our values goes, our array goes zero, one, two, all the way to six, whereas our columns go one through seven. So it's always one less than that. I know it can be a little bit confusing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if the value without spaces inside that array, meaning 
taking away this space if this value is not empty then we're going to make the update and we want to make sure it doesn't contain one time it had dashes in it so i want to make sure it doesn't contain those dashes then we're going to check to make sure it doesn't contain dashes then we're going to make the update the contacts contact row contact column value equals again we're information in that array minus one we're going to take the value in that array and we're going to place it directly inside that's going to add or update the contact information and remove any spaces before or after remember there's always these spaces that come in see these spaces here i just want to remove the spaces before and after and the trim command does just that it removes those extra spaces before and after strings okay so we have that i also want to update the notification text i want to know because when i'm updating it i want to get a nice notification text the following contact has been either remember either added or updated it's going to say we've already changed this then i want the header a colon right probably no space after that probably remove that a header the header name the colon and then the value so we're going to do just that so we're going to do that so we're going to remove that space so i think our headers have values on them okay so i think our headers have spaces on it that's why because look the contact name it's got a space after that that's why because there is no space before the colon here so what i want to do is the notification text equals the contact cells to and the contact column what is this this is our header right here if we take a look inside our header inside contacts we see the contact name here there is a space right there isn't there you see that and so basically what we did i got this from fake data that was pretty cool so i'll show you that another day okay so let's take a look so basically we i don't want a space after that so i'm just removing the spaces so we're going to take the values in that header and we want those values directly in those results right here and so we're going to do that right here so the header plus the colon and then i want a space after the colon then whatever the value that they've just made the update and i want a brand new line so this is going to take that notification text and it's going to update this string value so it's going to let us know then all we need to do is take that shape this shape and update it with that notification text so that shape is called response shape we're going to update that shape so based on the entry sheet the shape response shape text frame text range text equals the notification so this lets the user know exactly what was updated okay very cool we can move a little bit quicker now but i wanted to get that contact update now the next one is the transaction macros remember we've gone through this let's take a look at our conversion conversation flow here so we're requesting we've sent the data type we know it's a contact we're either adding a contact updating a contact or deleting a contact if we're updating or deleting a contact we found the row we're going to update delete and we're going to send that notification to the user and for adding a new contact we're going to simply add that new contact and then show the information what about if we want to add transaction if we're adding transaction we are going to run a macro if we remember in the initial we're adding a brand new transaction if the database equals transactions we're going to add a transaction along with the request type so if we go in here this could be a little bit quicker almost the same add transaction request type as string this is going to be add the only thing we have we don't have update or delete transactions at this point until i figure out how or you guys help me but right now it would be hard because we'd have to find exactly which transaction you could have two transactions that are the same value and i don't want to delete the wrong one so keep that in mind what we could do is we could say something like um show me all the transactions for a certain day it gives you a list of transactions and then you could select the one that would be delete i think that would be good okay so that gives you an idea of what we could have in the future so there's certainly lots of possibilities what i want to do is i want to add some context to this so i want to give you information i want to let chat gpt know exactly what day what month what year and all the information it should know this but this kind of helps so we're going to give it some date context and so what do i mean by that if we take a look inside the entries i've added some dates all the way here we have if we scroll up i have uh this month today is this is an s2 i have the month start is in t2 last month start and so i've got some little dates here that we're going to help and i want to submit these dates to ChatGPT so it has a very good understanding what the current date is what the current month and what the current year is although it should know that but it's kind of finicky sometimes so i want to just make sure and i also want to submit a request right so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a transaction request so along with the user if we say i spent a certain amount of money on this date I want to send that but i also want to send a request so what is that request please parse the following transaction detail request into the following columns appropriately any missing data should be left blank 
What about sample data? If the dates are returned, then the dates must be on a certain format, MMDD, YYY, format. Otherwise, leave blank. Do not add any data that is not in the original contact. The type should either be income or expense. Results should be in a table form using the following column structure. And we're giving it a very specific date, type, account, and amount. So that's the structure that I want. So let's run a little bit sample. I got my work paycheck today for, let's say, $1,500. $1, okay, so that's an income. I got my work paycheck. And we want that income from work, $1,400 on the current date. So having those dates helps us. We can see inside the transaction, it got added. So we need to add that transaction right here. This was not helpful, so we can get rid of that right here and then just clear that. Okay, so we it came in just, just the way we wanted to, income work, and now how do we make that happen? Well, again, we have to add that context. So that context, now that we've added all the date context, so basically, I'm telling G chat GPT the current date is S2 and I'm giving it a format. The current month is whatever's in T2. So basically, we're giving it all this information about the dates. And uh, it, it's proved to be helpful. Not necessary, but helpful. So I put it in there. So we're going to take all of these strings and put it in something called date context. This day, this month, last month, next month. So basically, we're giving some date context that we can the chat CPT. Then the request. The request is coming in at C4. In this case, the request here was, I got my work paycheck today for $1,400. Um, can you imagine how cool this would be if you're on your phone and you speak this information into it? It goes into a Dropbox, Dropbox puts it into text, and then it goes into Excel. So basically, you could just speak all your expenses, all your income into your phone, and it'll come into Excel. So I think that would be a pretty cool addition to this. But I can see that very, very well in the future because this is more like natural language, like speaking. So I can see that happening. Okay, continuing on. So inside our macro, we're making that initial request, right? You got your paycheck or whatever. We also have the prompt conditions that I read to you. Basically, we want to let ChatGPT know that we want, we want it to take the information, put it into certain columns that we want, right? We want that natural language, but we want it in date, type, account, and amount. And I want it in that exact order. And I've given it some date context. So we're giving it that, that prompt conditions. Then we're gonna take that actual prompt, it's simply going to be the prompt conditions plus the request, and we've also added date context into the prompt conditions. Okay, again, I wanna remove any new lines. I wanna remove any dollar, it doesn't do well with dollar signs, so we're just gonna keep them blank, right? Replacing any dollar signs with nothing. Replacing any uh, new lines with uh, backslash n, so it wouldn't do good with new lines in case you have the same new line that doesn't work well, okay? So we're gonna get this into something you can read called prompt. And again, we're gonna go through everything else that we've just been, sending all the information, getting our response, debugging our response, which looks something like, let's see if I can bring that up. Let's view the immediate window here so we can see that. Okay, so again, basically we want that information in here. And uh, let's take a look, did we get it? Um, dates must return. So we have our prompt here. The type should be either income or expenses here. And so we have it all information here, the current date, the current month. So we have all that information. We set all that to ChatGPT. So, but I want to know what is it that we went. So it's going to return to us again inside that exact format. So what does it look like that it's sent? So we got that response back. Okay, so what we got back is looks like this. We got back this, the date income work 1400 so this is what we want and of course we have to parse it and everything like that so we need to remove the right and the left so let's take a look at what this looks like it basically you can see what it looks like it looks like right here so after we've removed everything we get this right here this highlighted area the date the income the work so this is what chat gpt returned to us we remove everything from the right we remove everything from the left and we have just this area to work from so that's all we need to do so then i just want to check for certain conditions remove this i want to remove the first end we don't need that first end so we're removing that if it exists we're going to check it does exist in this case so that means it would remove this because i don't need that I want to just, this is all I want. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so we're going to check if the parse answer equals amount. That means it included the headers. Sometimes it includes the headers. If it does, I want to then take that and all and get the second line. In other words, it would include the headers and then the information, and it would be on the second row. It would be split by this. So we're going to take that. So we're going to split it by the first and second row, and we're taking the second row. That's why it's one. However, 
if there's no headers like it is in this case look there's no headers here all we're going to do is we're going to create an array called transaction array we're going to split it by this particular divider here this straight line and we're splitting the parsed answer okay great so and then this is i covered this we don't need this as a duplicate area we don't need that okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to determine the first available transaction row then what we're going to do is the notification text the following transaction has been added it's going to be get that transaction we're going to run a loop just as we did with contacts right and we're going to run that loop and also what we're going to be able to do is take the information and add it in so the transaction cells equal the value so we're adding this data so we're running the loop from one to four adding this to the first column the second column the third and the fourth column through this line of code this adds all the data to the transaction row and the transaction column columns one through four and then again we're removing the spaces using trim we're going to add our data in our first data value is zero our first column is one so one minus one is zero that's our first data value in an array so we're adding that information there the notification we're just building that notification text just as we did before because i want to know the headers so again the date here we don't have spaces here so that's good the date the type account amount so we're adding in the headers then we're adding in the values and we're going to create that brand the date the income the work so we're creating this notification uh, text right here through this line of code right here notification text then all we're gonna do is add that notification text to that okay very good that's it one last macro to go over I hope you're hanging with us and that is the summary request remember if we look in our workflow we've been through everything except the last one we understand contact data update data delete the contact add transaction data and the last is the summarized data the summarized data let's go over a quick thing we went over a few of them what is the profit for last month okay so I want to know what the total profit is for last month that's going to be the income and expenses so how do I get that information okay it says the profit for the March is the total income minus the total expenses the total income for March gives us information here so how do we get that that's going to be a transaction summary and once again we have a brand new instructions for that and that's going to be located those instructions are going to be located there's a lot of them in 07 okay I'm going to read these briefly I don't know if you want to hear all the instructions but there's a lot of them so basically what I want to do is I want to determine the transaction criteria to possibly filter the transaction by data so I'm giving it some samples from date and to date from the first to last month so I've given it a lot of samples of what it here's some samples including accounts such as groceries work dinner or food this is only sample data and should not be included right if the user says I want something greater than 100 maybe we only want to filter amounts based on something we can do that or less than a certain amount we can do that I'm giving it some samples I want it to return data in a very specific format any missing data should be left blank no sample data return dates in a certain format right only data must be returned not descriptions do not any sample data again just repeating it Re uh, please return the following so this is important please return the data in the following format from date to date type account and amount from date to date so this is the order that I want it so if, if I say in natural language last month the from date is going to be March 1st the to date is going to be March 31st okay so it's going to automatically know that the type if I say expenses it's going to be expenses account if it's a specific account and the amount okay so also please respond accordingly based on the following request so then you add in the request so after that comes our request which is profit right so if it's profit I want both expenses and the, oh let me just double check I went over a little quick on one thing here um here this one if there is a mention of profit I want to make sure that I covered that okay here we go if the entry includes the word profit then do not return income or expenses and skip adding anything in this column why is that because when I have a transaction and I want to filter all my transactions based on certain dates I don't want expenses and income I want both expenses and income and I want to get that total profit so that is very very important that we get that so we want to know the total profit for that okay all right so how are we going to get that so therefore the profit from last month is 2475 so it gives a nice explanation and I'll go over that in a minute okay so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have both so I just instructed it if the user mentions the word profit do not filter based on either income or expense so 
keeping type blank allows the results to come through equal expenses. So in this case, what I want ChatGPT, I want them to give me this date. And because the user entered last month, it knows, it should know what the dates of last month are. And I want it to give it to me in a very specific format. Now, if I mention expense or income, then I want that to go in here in type. Or if I mention a specific count, hopefully it should go in here or a specific amount, it should go in here. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is I just have a total here that's gonna help us understand that. But let's go into the macro and see what that is. So the most important thing at this point, which we wanna understand is that the, this is the instructions that we're gonna send. It's a lot of instructions. We wanna get that criteria. So those instructions are based on 07, 07. So we see down here. Okay, so it's that transaction summary. So with the request, again, C4 as it always is, I'm giving it context, probably not important because I did give it already. So giving it all that context, that prompt condition based on 07 and the date context, giving it that date context once again. Creating the prompt, sending that all the way information all to HC and getting some results. So we want the criteria. I want to extract those results and I want to debug that response. So if we take a look down here to see what kind of response we got here, we got here 3133 and then profit. Now I've, I've made some adjustments here in VBA. Notice it did return profit. Sometimes it doesn't follow directions very well, but I can remove that through VBA if it does exist and exactly what we did. Okay. So great, let's continue on. So we've got this information, it's send us all back, right? And again, we're going to check the conditions, we're gonna parse the answer just like we did. And then what we're gonna do is, I want if it contains no response, that means no response from server. We're gonna focus on the transactions. We're gonna clear out any previous criteria, right? We need to send some criteria. And that criteria is going to go right in here, I33M. So I wanna clear anything out that might've been there before. So we're clearing out all the criteria. This should be fine. Oh, oh, and the results, and sorry. And the results, so we're gonna go all the way through S. I wanna clear out any prior results that might've been here too. So we went all the way through S. Okay, continuing on. Now what I want to do is I want to, if the response contains more than run rows, the first row of header. In other words, did the response contain any headers? If it did, I wanna exclude those. Just like we did before, if it includes the header also, that means it's gonna be two lines. If it's two lines, it will contain this, meaning two lines. So we're gonna split it and use the second line. However, if it did not include, if the response included one line, we're just simply going to split it just like we did. The answer is gonna be split on this, just like we did before. Then we're simply gonna run a loop for the criteria equals zero, three, where the, I remember zero through three. And then inside the transactions, row three, column nine plus the criterion number. Why column nine plus the criterion number? Well, if we take a look inside our criteria, our first column here, is column nine. So if I add nine to zero, one, two, three. So we're gonna get all the amounts. So we're gonna run it all through there. Whatever the results here, but if it's a date, we're gonna add on to it. So basically we're removing spaces using the trim. Whatever the results are, that parsed answer, we're simply gonna add in here. So we're in the first column, we're gonna add three, one. In the second column, we're gonna add three and then leave it blank. And then we're gonna add profit. But if that's there, we're gonna remove it. So then what we're going to be doing is if I3 is not empty, I3 meaning the from a date, I wanna add greater than or less than, excuse me, greater than or equals. If the second J3 is not empty, I wanna add on top of that less than or equals. Okay, I'm not gonna rely up to chat GPT to do that, so we're gonna do that right here. If it's not blank, we're simply going to, this value equals whatever the value is and we're adding in greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Okay, then what we're gonna do is determine the last row of data. If the last row is less than four, then there's no transactions, okay? Then if the range L3 does not equal expense or L3 does not equal income. So I'm gonna check, basically, I wanna make sure that only income or expense are here inside L, right? I don't want anything else inside the account. Okay, yeah, I just made a quick update. If the range equals K3 or K3 or equals expenses or income, then clear the contents. And what does that mean? It means what I wanna do, if it's not equal to expenses, if it's not equal to income, then it shouldn't be anything. Sometimes it puts profit there. So what I mean is in K3, if it's not income, 
If it's not expenses, then I want to make sure it cleared out. I've seen it put profit here or here or here. So I want to make sure that these are cleared out and make sure the profit is not here. In fact, in my test, it did run that. Notice the profit from date to date, blank and profit. So we're going to check that. I've also added if L3 equals profit, then clear the content. So just to make sure that profit doesn't belong there as well. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to run that advanced filter. Now that advanced filter is going to come from that original data. Let's take a look inside that advanced filter from the original data A2 through D and down. The results are going to come through I2 all the way through M3 and the criteria results are going to come P through S, column P. And that's just what we have inside our data, P through S. We're going to determine the last results row based on column S. We're going to use that mount field to get our last results row. If it's less than three, let the user know that there's no transaction. Then what we want to do is I want to add all that transaction data into a string. So whatever, basically including the headers, I want to take all of this data and I want to put it into a single string. And I want to add the total here. What is this total? Well, this total is going to be based on either the total income or expenses or profit. How do I know if it's profit? If the type is empty, then I want the profit, meaning the total income minus the total expenses. So if K3 is empty, I'm going to take in the total income minus the total expenses to determine the profit. Otherwise, simply sum up what's there. So if the word expenses, so if we just have expense here, I want to make sure that this amount equals the expense or income. But if it's empty, I want to make sure it's the profit. So I'm going to take all this information, run a loop, put all that into a string. I'm going to take this total, I'm going to put that into a string as well. And I'm going to send that all to ChatGPT because I want to send all the information along with our original request. And I wanted to take all that and create a, a nice little response right here. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to set the transaction data started out as, as empty. And then we're going to run that loop for the row transaction row two, meaning I want to include the headers to the last results row and then run another loop from 16 to 19. Basically, it is going to be columns 16 through 19 and from rows two all the way to last, putting all that in a string. When it comes to the columns, I want to put a separator onto that. So the transaction data is going to be whatever the current transaction data is, plus the value of the transaction column and just the way that it likes to see a space, the separator, the straight line, and another space. So this is how we're going to separate the column data. Then we want to separate the row data. So it's going to loop through this on the columns. Then for new rows, we're going to take the transaction data, whatever the current transaction data, as an add a new row. Now this is backslash and is exactly what it likes to see with new rows. When it returns information or gets information inside a table format, that's the way it wants to be formatted. So that's exactly the way we're going to send it. So we're going to add in all of that into a single string variable called transaction data. I also want to add in a brand new row on last, and I want to add in information about that total transaction data with a total of transactions, whatever's in V1. So that total that we've calculated, I also want to send that to ChatGPT. It doesn't do very good with math totaling up things itself. So we are going to help it. We're going to let it know what the total should be so that it can come up with the perfect solution. So it can take all the data, the correct total, and combine that for a proper response. And so that's just what we're going to do here. So we're going to send that information and we're going to add in that chat GPT seems bad at math. So then we're going to add in the prompt conditions. Our prompt conditions are based on 08. So these are our prompt conditions. So what are they? Our last prompt condition right here under 08 is right here. And that is our transaction result request. So let's take a look at that. Please summarize the results based on the requested information. Please also make sure that when totaling the amounts or values to total, all the values within the given column based on and requested criteria. So basically what we're saying is take a look at all the data we're sending you and come up with a summary based on that that's readable. So we're just basically saying here's all the data. Income or expenses are based on the type and not the account column. We're letting it know. And also the, specify the type of expense or type of income. List all the data that allowed you to come up to this conclusion. Be sure to list all the amounts and make sure they calculate precisely based on the following data. So this is the beginning of the prompt. And then what comes after that? So our prompt conditions are in 08. That's the beginning. We're going to add on to that. So the prompt condition plus some new lines plus all that transaction data, which includes the totals, plus our original request and the date content. So we're sending all of that through the API. 
all that information so it can come to a correct conclusion. So we're going to send all that just as we did before. And then we're going to get a response. It's going to go into this string. We're going to parse that response. Again, removing all the things that we don't want. And then we're going to take that parsed answer once we remove everything we don't want. And we're going to put it in this shape here. So it's going to take on this shape right here is the text. And the response is going to look something like this. So this response came directly from ChatGPT based on this question, based on also our request, and based on all of the data that we've submitted, including the total. That's why it was able to come up with a correct response based on all the accurate information that we sent it. Okay, very, very good. So that's all we need to do. So that's pretty much it. I try to keep these strings a little bit low. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Let's take a quick look or see what we have learned. We have learned that we can actually take information from a single line input using natural language and actually get things done whether we're adding contacts or we're updating contacts or maybe we want to delete contacts we can also add transaction data and we can actually request data based on our existing data and request conditions such as total expenses total income or even profit and have that into natural language and send it back to us in a natural language so that our natural language input is doing all of the work for us so that is how we do it. and that's i think the future of excel with a combination of formulas and functions and code and of course chat gpt gets it all done and helps us all right i hope you have enjoyed this training if you do want to support this channel so many great ways to do it via another way is to get that 250 workbooks i've got my best templates i put into a single zip and created some really incredible PDF codebooks. Of course, that's a great way if you do like those PDF codebooks. I've also got those available on our Patreon. I'll be making updates to this exact application next week. I want to know what your ideas are. What would you like to see? What should I do? Challenge me. What do you think? And I'm going to put those updates into a brand new recording, into a brand new workbook. And I'm going to make those available on Patreon. So make sure you're on the platform. It also helps us out. It's just a few dollars a month uh, for you, and it goes a long way to helping us out. All right. Thanks so much for your continued support. We'll see you next week. Much appreciated.